Uh, well, we're an anti-war coffee house uh, created in the tradition of the anti-war coffee houses of the 1960s and 70s. Here locally, there was uh, back in the uh, 60s and 70s, there was uh, uh, the shelter half, which was uh, which helped uh, soldiers from the Vietnam War deal with uh, issues uh, relating to their service. And sorry. Sit still that yeah, <laughs> and uh, we've been uh, uh, we're we're not only are we anti-war, but we're uh, very much pro-soldier. Uh, we want to help out all the soldiers, and we'll help soldiers out regardless of their political views. Uh, we do GI rights counseling. We uh, help soldiers if they're in trouble with their chain of command. We also have a mental health care counselor on staff who has uh, who has been deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan as a uh, as a soldier. Uh, she was in the initial invasion of Iraq and is no stranger to combat. So she can talk to uh, or speak to uh, issues of post-traumatic stress disorder in ways that most counselors, even the counselors on Fort Lewis, uh, can't. And also, uh, she uh, the services through the shop are confidential, uh, whereas mental health care through the uh, military is uh, has virtually no seal of uh, of confidentiality. In fact, if someone uh, releases uh, any kind of sensitive data to their counselor, that has to be reported to their chain of command. And if someone is uh, uh, violating the don't ask, don't tell policy that forbids uh, homosexual acts in the military, uh, that also has to be uh, reported to the chain of command. So this is a, uh, this is something that's, uh, uh, you know, we feel is really important to provide unbiased uh, health care uh, mental health care to uh, to soldiers. We field calls from uh, around the country. Uh, I, uh, in fact, had a call from uh, someone in the Navy the other day uh, who was uh, having issues with military service, and uh, uh, you know we uh, uh, we help people out uh, around the country. And there's other coffee shops like ours uh, around the country. There's under the hood, outside of uh, Fort Hood, Texas, and uh, there's off base in uh, in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, and uh, we're all very different in how we're run, but we're, uh, uh, we, we all have very similar uh, uh, similar goals. Uh, and that's uh, helping soldiers and ending the wars through getting soldiers to advocate to themsel for themselves. How did you get started? Uh, we started as a, uh, uh, an independent study project uh, at uh, Evergreen State College. I got out of the Army and uh, went to Evergreen and then did a feasibility study on uh, whether or not such a place could uh, would be financially viable and uh, we uh, held a press conference uh, that we were intending to do this and uh, Tully's Coffee actually uh, donated everything we needed to uh, uh, to open the coffee house. They donated all our equipment that we have in the shop so uh, that gave us uh, most of what we needed uh, to, to get going. Once we had that, it, the donations started rolling in and people really wanted to support us. And that's, that's how we currently support ourselves is, is through donations. Foundations like the Ben and Jerry's Foundation, uh, Lucky Seven Foundation, uh, uh, who did a matching grant for us, uh, and uh, Resist uh, are all, uh, these are all organizations that have really helped us out, as well as Veterans for Peace. Veterans for Peace, uh, the individual chapters have, uh, have really helped us out as well, and uh, as well as, you know, providing uh, a lot of help around the shop. The government has, uh, has not stepped up to give us any money, and the Army has actually, uh, has actually put out security uh, reports about us. Uh, uh, mentioning that we are a uh, subversive organization. Uh, that all has been taken care of. We uh, approached Fort Lewis's uh, uh, public relations and uh, uh, explained to them that we're providing services for soldiers at a time when uh, they're having problems with soldiers uh, uh, having uh, uh, legal troubles. Uh, there was recently a soldier who shot a police officer in uh, in Salt Lake City before being shot himself. Uh, he was from Fort Lewis. He was actually AWOL from Fort Lewis. And uh, there was uh, uh, a another soldier that was involved in a hostage situation. He had taken hostages and was in a standoff with the police. Uh, so this is a, really a vital time to support this sort of thing. And uh, uh, and uh, we, we made that known to the Army and, uh, you know, uh, they uh, they definitely backed off of their position that we are in fact a subversive organization and uh, have uh, now released a statement saying that we're a legitimate business uh, and that we're helping soldiers and uh, that commanders should not tell their soldiers not to come here. Uh, we have a matching grant now from the uh, Lucky Seven Foundation so anyone who 
uh, who donates uh, within the next couple of months uh, will have their grant uh, or their donation matched uh, by the Lucky Seven Foundation. So uh, right now, if, if people are interested in uh, in donating, uh, now is the time. Their their donation will be doubled. So when soldiers come back, uh, many of them have PTSD, and this is a this is a public health issue. This is uh, this is something that uh, follows those soldiers back into their communities and uh, results in. High rates of drunk driving, high rates of drug use, high high rates of uh, domestic abuse, and uh, so if uh, you know, the, and, and the people who are uh, who are supporting this war are really doing nothing to help the soldiers who are uh, who are uh, uh, you know suffering from the effects of these wars. Uh, we've had uh, you know soldiers coming to us with these concerns. Of course, we always uh, try and get to them to a uh, someone who's qualified to deal, uh, you know, a qualified mental health care worker and uh, we uh, you know help them work through the issues that they have and uh, I think by providing a sense of community for uh, for folks um, you know we, we uh, help head off a lot of that before it uh, before it ever buds into uh, violence or suicide isolation is something that many of these soldiers are facing uh, you know a lot of them don't have families or they're uh, hundreds of miles away from their families and um, you know they're coming back with all these issues and there's really no support structure on post uh, that, that is effective at dealing with these, uh, with these issues. Uh, well, we're coming up on two years. Uh, here in November, we'll have been open for uh, two years. So uh, this is, uh, it's, really, um, it's really been inspiring to see the community come out and, and support us and uh, help us uh, keep our doors open. And uh, it's really good to see a lot of the soldiers uh, coming through here who are, who are just uh, you know, uh, dumbfounded that the, that uh, such a place exists, and so grateful uh, that uh, that these services are available to them. Sometime in uh, uh, early to mid-November, we'll be having our one-year our two-year anniversary, so we look forward to that. I'm a soldier at war. I know you've seen my. Face.